The following x86 and C refresher lab is what we're going to be looking at. So for some background, the x86 is a widely used microprocessor. It is in the Windows and Macintosh personal computers. It's important to be familiar with the Intel architecture IA. In the lab, we will become familiar with the Intel architecture using debuggers, assemblers, UN assemblers, and hand assembly. These tools are going to allow us to enter programs assemble, execute, debug, and modify our programs. Tools and techniques developed in our lab will prepare for using microcontrollers in later labs. We are going to be using C programs in this lab, and this will allow us to refresh our C programming knowledge and explore C programming with microprocessors. Also, this is an x86 C refresher lab who will be prepare, preparation for using the C programming language to program the microcontrollers. Our objectives are to become familiar with how microprocessors operate, to become familiar with the programming of microprocessors using machine language assembly code and C language, to become more proficient in the use of microprocessor debugging tools and techniques, to become more familiar with assemblers and their use in programming microprocessors, to understand how to hand assemble instructions for microprocessors, to understand program development cycle, program and test debug, modify, test debug, repeat until it's done, and then to use tracing charts, breakpoints, and to verify and debug programs. Also to develop a program with a flowchart, or from a flowchart, and then to write a documented code with the flowchart and commented code. So now we're going to start our laboratory. Before we do that, we're going to look at the actual lab itself. And so we have our title page, and there are a few things that we need to do um, that I've already done, but before we go on, I'm going to write an overview of our lab and then also include our flowchart. I've written the overview. We're gonna go back and do the flowchart later. So we're gonna look at our part one. This is the introduction to debug and C refresher, and there's a part two, but that will come later. For step 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1, we are going to be inside of here. Um, we're just going over the instructions on how to get into our virtual machine here. Once we're in a virtual machine, we're going to open up the debug. And this virtual machine is just from a download. So we are in Windows 98, and we are going to be using the debug menu. So we're going to type debug in, do a question mark, and press enter. And doing that will give us all the different possible commands that we can make. And they are not case sensitive. So that is how we would do the debug line. Next, we are going to use the debug D command to display the contents of our memory locations. So we're going to enter the following three commands and we're going to note their effect. So um, that is going to be step two. So in step two, I tested the dump command. That's what the D is for. And we're going to get these three things. So if we go inside of here, we're going to do D, which is dump space zero one zero zero and press enter. We get all the commands we can see it's from 0, 1, 0, 0 to some value. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 things, maybe for like 8 bits that it's just displaying. Now, if we want a range, we're going to do D space 0, 1, 0, 0, and then 0, 1, 1, 0, and press Enter. And we only get this small range right here. And that gives these values. Now, when we read across, it's important. And I believe I wrote this right here. So um, to the left, the far left, we have the addresses, and then we have the offset of where we are at. So we have address and where we are at. So this one, for example, is going to be 100. This e to the 8 is going to be 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on and so forth until we get to this right here. Um, and so we have 0, 100. For the last one, we just have a large range. We're going to do D, D 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, press enter, and that gives us an even bigger range than what we had before. And so that is how we would use the dump command to display the contents of our memory locations. Now we're going to use the debug enter command E to enter the assembly language program. So E is for enter, and we're going to have our start location as the 0, 100. So CS 0, 100. CS is our code segment and is determined by our operating system, does not need to be set. We enter only the machine code shown in red because it's going to auto-generate this part to the left and then the 0.00 .00 and then 
the rest of that stuff. So instead of like typing all of this out, instead of doing that, because that's a lot of work, what we can do instead is write all of these values in a notepad, but we're gonna look at that in a second. If we were to type it out, we would do E100, so we're gonna enter the location 100, and now we see we have DE, we do BA. Now when we want to get the next thing, we're just going to do a space, not enter or tab or a space, just a space. We would do 20 in here, space, a one space, a one space, and so on and so forth. And we want to exit, we'll just press enter. Now, if we do display 100, we can see that we have the updated values here. We did update them. Now, this could be tedious if we want to type all of that out. So instead of doing that, what we can do is write it in this text document. Note, there is a space in between each of these. And so we'll write it like this. We can copy all of this. And then we're going to come and use the paste up here, click it and paste it in here and then press enter. And that is the same way of how we would use the enter command. In step four, after we've entered the program using the E command from step three, we are going to use the debug unassemble command, which is U, to see the program that we have just entered. We're then going to compare the output of this command with the program listing here, noting our differences and correcting them if we have any differences. So to unassemble, to see our program, we're just going to do U. And from U, uh, we're going to do 100 to 118. And that is to see all of the values that we entered here. So 100 to 118. And then we press enter here. And that's going to give us all of these things. And we can see that it matches up here pretty nicely. We have three move instructions. We have a sub, jump greater than, and add jump greater than, jump a move in an int. And so looking at each of these individually, we're going to put 0, 0120 into our DX. And if we look at them for everything, um, there's specifics for all of them. So we are going to take our first instruction. We're going to move it into, because this is a constant value, since it's a number, it's a constant value. And we're going to move it into our, and then from here, when we have brackets, it's not an immediate value. Instead of it, it's an address of where something is located. So that's the move there. And then we're going to move this into our B of X. Then we have our subtract where we're subtracting our uh, B of X from our A of X. So we're going to take our A of X minus B of X. And then we're going to store the results inside of our A of X register. Now we have a jump condition. And this jump condition has a greater than or equal to condition. So if it is greater than or equal to, so if basically our previous a of x is greater than or equal to b of x, we are going to jump down to 0, 1, 1, 4, which is down here, where we would put our a of x into the location 0, 200, and then end our program. However, if it's less than, not equal to, we're going to fall down into this add statement, where we add our d of x into our a of x. And then we are going to jump if it's greater than to 0, 1, 1, 4. So we would jump down here to this uh, move. Otherwise, we'd fall through to this jump. And this is an unconditional jump statement, which is basically like a loop. And it's going to loop us back to 0, 10e, which is this line where we add our d of x into our a of x. And then we're going to keep going until our um, a of x, until we have a greater than. So until we have some positive number, we are not going to be out of here. The last line is the interrupt command, which will then end our program. In step five, we have the register modify command, and it's going to set the instruction pointer, this is our IP register, to point to location CS100, which is the beginning of our program. So we are going to point the instruction pointer to the front here. An example of using our R command is what we have here. So if we do dash R, we know that our A of X, B of X, C of X, and D of X are actually 16-bit registers, and they're a compromise of two 8-bit registers, which are like AH and AL, and the same thing for the other ones. Our command prompt is going to display our registers and instruction pointer. The instruction pointer, which is IP, is where we are currently located. DS stands for data segment. ES is the extra segment. SS is our stack statement. CC, CS is the code statement. And the next set of data is our flags. So everything over here are our flags. 
and this is reserved for later. The last step is our instruction and we're going to run that next. So the instruction is right here. And then we're going to be looking at tracing, which is going to run this next.